If you're taking Mandarin learning advice from your Cantonese speaking parents, stop right now. Picture this. You're a Cantonese speaker and you want to learn Mandarin. You ask your parents and they say, This does not work unless you want to sound like this guy. No, he does not sound good, and yes, he was made into a meme on Chinese social media. Here's the problem. This theory of medium works in theory for some words. So for example, yong to use becomes yong in Mandarin. Mai to buy becomes mai. Song in Cantonese becomes song, very similar. In fact, for these words, if you just use the tone mapping rules that we outline in this video, then you'll actually be pretty on the money with medium. But what about words like fu for pants becomes ku in Mandarin, or hai for shoe becomes xie in Mandarin. What about words like that? You can't just medium because it's not even close. Hai becomes xie. If I medium, I get Ha ha hi? Without any idea on how to alter mediums, you'll just sound stupid when going from Cantonese to Mandarin. Now, I'm not saying that medium is wrong, I'm just saying you have to learn how to properly medium to get into Mandarin. So how do you do that? This is where Canto to Mando word mappings come into play. By studying Canto to Mando word mappings, you'll learn exactly how to mediums so you can go from Cantonese to Mandarin really easily. So how does this work? Well, there are actually predictable patterns between Mandarin equivalents for Cantonese words. For instance, the Cantonese G becomes a Mandarin J about 80% of the time. For example, Gai for chicken becomes G in Mandarin. Gay for machine becomes G in Mandarin as well. In fact, if we look at the word gay in Cantonese, it actually becomes G in Mandarin almost every single time. This is an example of a mapping. We're gonna focus this video solely on the initials. Initials word mapping, which is basically the first letter of a given word. B, P, D, T, N, L. These are the simplest ones because of the fact that in Cantonese, all of these become the exact same thing in Mandarin with over 90% accuracy. Meaning that over 90% of the time, it will be the exact same thing. So for example, B, ba ba, in Mandarin becomes ba ba. They're both Bs, all right? Next one is P, pao bao, pao bu. So that pao for jog becomes pao. Next is D, which is dai. That D there, in Mandarin it's a ta. Same thing again, all right? Next one you have is T, for example, tang to listen. In Mandarin, ting, ting, both Ts. Next one you have is N, so for example, you, nei. In Mandarin, ni. And finally we have the L, lo, for six. In Mandarin, liu. So for all of these ones, B, P, D, T, N, L, it's pretty straightforward with over 90% accuracy. You can bet that it will be the exact same thing in Mandarin. Now, before we get into all of the word mappings, let's outline exactly what this is gonna do for you. One, it's gonna allow you to better predict what a Mandarin equivalent will be for a Cantonese word. Two, it's gonna make it easier for you to memorize Mandarin equivalents of Cantonese words since now you have more anchor points to go on. And three, one of the big benefits is that it's gonna work in reverse and also allow you to predict what the Cantonese equivalent for an unfamiliar Mandarin word is. For example, you hear the word qi guai, and it sounds like something you know in Cantonese, kei guai, but you're not really sure. Well, you know, okay, well, the K in Cantonese actually becomes a Q in Mandarin about 50% of the time. So odds are, in this case, qi guai probably means k guai. So that's a really good benefit about this whole thing is actually going in reverse and helping you to learn Mandarin faster because now, okay, you learned k guai in Mandarin is qi guai and you also were able to understand what the other person was saying. All right, so those are the benefits. The rest of the initials have a few possibilities when compared to Mandarin. So the S in Cantonese stays in S in Mandarin about 20% of the time. So S for Sam, number three, becomes San in Mandarin. Now, S most commonly becomes an SH in Mandarin. So for example, Si Gan Si for time becomes Shi Shi Jian in Mandarin. About 45% of the time, so si gan shi jian. Now another 20% of the time, it will become an X. So for example, sun for new becomes xin, it becomes an X. Next one is the Cantonese Z. 20% of the time, that Z will remain a Z. So for example, Z for word will become zi in Mandarin. Most of the time, it will become a ZH. So zi to know, zi to, zi to, to know becomes a ZH. Zhi to, zhi, zhi. And then 16% of the time, it will become a J. So for example, Jin to cut becomes jian. Jin tao fa, jian tao fa. Next we have C, which can either become a C, CH, or a Q. 23% of the time, the C will remain a C. For example, tan tang, for example, in Mandarin, will do the same thing. 
Tan Ting, Tan becomes Tan, the exact same thing. Most of the time, that C will become a CH. For example, Cha, where T becomes Cha in Mandarin. Now, sometimes, about 70% of the time, that C will become a Q. For example, Cut for 7 becomes Qi. Next, we have the one we went through earlier. G in Cantonese becomes either a G in Mandarin, stays the same, or becomes a J. So it becomes a G about 16% of the time. So, for example, Go for tall becomes go in Mandarin. Most of the time it will become a J. So for example, gong to speak in Mandarin becomes jia. So next we have GW in Cantonese, which can either become a GU or a JU in Mandarin. So most of the time it will be a GU. So for example, guo to cross, guo ma lo in Mandarin becomes guo, very similar. Guo ma lo, guo ma lu. Now sometimes it'll become a JU. So for example, guan for army in Mandarin becomes Alright guys, we're almost there. There's not that many initials in Chinese. Next we have the Cantonese K, which can either become K, Q, or J in Mandarin. For example, for the word for card, Ka becomes Ka in Mandarin for card. And this is only about 16% of the time. Now most commonly that Cantonese K will become a Q. So for example, K for weird, K guai from earlier. In Mandarin we have Qi, Qi guai. Now about 23% of the time it will become a J. So if I have a cup for level or for grade or whatever, in Mandarin it becomes G, G. So for example, Yelling Cup in Mandarin becomes Inian G. Only three left to go. By the way, guys, if you're writing all this out, you don't need to. All right, we actually have this flow chart all available in the link in the description box below. All right, it's part of our course, but we're giving it to you for free. You just need to check out our course. Our course is basically a course that basically helps Cantonese speakers leverage their Cantonese no matter what level it is to learn Mandarin. Just check out the course in the link down below. It helps us out a lot, and you will get this flow chart for free. Moving on. Only three left to go. KW in Cantonese most commonly becomes in Mandarin KU, QU, or GU. Now most of the time that KW will become a KU. So for example, Kwa for Kwa Zheng, excessive, in Mandarin becomes Kwa, Kwa Zheng, and that's about 70% of the time. Now about 7% of the time it will become QU. So for example, Kwan in Cantonese to mean dress becomes Chun in Mandarin. Now about 50% of the time it will become GU. So for example, Kwe for Kuiting becomes Gui Gui Ding. All right, so only two more to go. These are both big ones. By the way, if you guys found this helpful at all, please subscribe down below because that helps us make more and really keeps us going. And by the way, if we can get this video to 1,000 likes, we'll make a separate video just for the finals. Next one is H, and H can either become H, X, K, or Q. First one, about 31% of the time, H just stays H. So for example, Ho for good becomes Ho. Now about 36% of the time, it becomes an X. So for example, Ha for down becomes Xia in Mandarin, or Ha for shrimp becomes Xia in Mandarin. So you see how that H becomes an X. Next, the H becomes a K about 17% of the time. So for example, Hao for to test, Hao Si in Mandarin becomes Kao, Kao Shi. So that H becomes a K. And finally, the H becomes a Q about 13% of the time. So for example, Hei to stand, to get up, in Mandarin becomes Qi. All right, last one now. And guys, you guys are doing an amazing job. Just remember to comment down below so I know what topics cover in the future. What is your favorite Cantonese food? I know it sounds random, but this helps me determine what kind of topics to cover in the future. All right, last one is the Cantonese F, and this becomes an F, H, or K. About 67% of the time, Cantonese F will stay as an F when it goes to Mandarin. So for example, fan for rice becomes fan in Mandarin for rice as well. About 17% of the time, that F will become an H. So for example, fa for flour becomes Hua, see that fa became an H, hua. And about 10% of the time, that Cantonese F will become a K in Mandarin. So for example, fai for fast becomes kuai. Or as we said earlier, fu for pants becomes ku. Or the word for bitter, fu, for bitter in Cantonese becomes ku in Mandarin. Click here to learn the secret to never memorizing Chinese tones again for Cantonese speakers. And click here to watch a video that YouTube thinks you'll love.